Hey there and welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco and over here I do Daz 3D tutorial videos so that you can get the most out of your own renders. So far in this beginner series of videos that we've been looking at, we've, we've covered a number of topics from downloading and installing models to creating a character ready to render and moving stuff around in 3D. Make sure you check those videos out if you've not already, uh, as it will give you a good grounding as to what we're about to do. Uh, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a first look at the most important element in any render, and that's lighting. Uh, it doesn't matter whether your lighting's great or rubbish, without it, you won't see anything at all. So it's about time we take a look at it. And so in this video, we're going to create a scene with the most basic type of lighting that we can. And that is with spotlights. So over here, we have in our scene a model all ready for action. Uh, I do have a camera in the scene also, which you can just see the, the faint edge of right over here. Uh, but there's currently nothing else. There may be a background in there, but there's no lighting or, or nothing else in the scene. Uh, and as we're only using spotlights in this scene and in this render, what we want to do is to tell Daz to limit itself to lighten the scene with only the lights that we're about to add uh, in a moment or two. Now, there's a few things that we need to do before we start adding those spotlights, though, and they are... Firstly, we need to come over to our render settings, which is this tab right here, and we need to ensure that we've got our environment options section available over here. Now, we can do this two ways. We can either do a, 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 a test little library render and, I, and Daz itself will, will create them for us. But if you want to create them uh, via the menus, you'd come up to create right here and you'd come down to this option here, new environment options node. And you'd put that in, this little dialog box would come up. You click accept and as you can see you've got now this environment section over here and it's also dropped this little thing into our scene tab up at the right here now what we can do in here if we give it a click we now need to come up to environment mode click that drop down menu and come down to scene only and what that's going to do is that's going to tell Daz to only use the lights that we're going to add into the scene our spotlights that we're going to add into the scene the second thing that we need to do if we're only going to be using the spotlights that we add into our scene is come up to general and we want to make sure the auto headlamp is set to never what that means is that our our perspective camera that we've got here uh, has a little headlamp attached to it and if there's no lights in the scene at all that headlamp will turn on and it'll brighten our model up and it'll look absolutely rubbish so we want that off for now and finally the third thing that we need to do for setup is come up to our window menu at the top Come down and make sure that preview lights are set to off. We're going to need to give that a click so that the icon isn't lit up. Uh, what that is, it does tries to, in, you know, mimic what the lights will look at when we're in this texture shade. And it makes everything go dark and makes everything look rubbish. We don't want that. So we turn that off. Uh, and once you get them three things set up, we're now ready to start adding spotlights. So now we've got all them three things set up. What we can do is we can now come across to NVIDIA iRay, give it a click, and everything in our scene should be black, just like that. Our model's still there. We can still hover over it, and it'll highlight various parts of it, but that's just to show that there's no other lights in our scene whatsoever, so the only lighting that we're going to get is going to come from the spotlights that we're adding. And there are a couple of ways in which we can add a spotlight. First of all, we can come up to this little icon that we see up here on my menu bar. Your menu bar might be somewhere different depending on what your user interface is set up as. So we come up to that icon there where it says create a new spotlight. Or we can come up to the create menu right up here. Give it a click. And there we can see new spotlight. If I give that a click, this little dialog window comes up. Now... There's two, there's two things that we can do with the light. We can either apply default settings to it, which what that will do is it will position the light at zero, zero, zero in our scene, which is roughly where our model's feet are down here. Or we can click on the next option, which is apply active viewport transport uh, transform, which is the perspective view. So basically it'll position the camera, uh, the spotlight at the position of our current camera, in this case, the perspective view. Uh, I always find that that's the best way to do it because what it means is we can position where we want our spotlight to go with our camera and then create the camera in that position. So if I cancel that and I take our perspective view, what I want to do is maybe just come around here somewhere and position a camera, uh, our camera about there, and then we can create a spotlight and we can tell Daz to put the spotlight right where this camera is. So if I come back up to create, come to spotlight, 
I select that second option down, apply active viewport transforms on the perspective view, which is this current camera, and then click accept. We get this circle appear now in our perspective view. And what that is, is our spotlight. If I just zoom out with our perspective view, there's our spotlight in our scene positioned the, the position that our perspective view camera was at. Now, if I reset our perspective view back to its default position, which is using this little icon here, and then we come up to NVIDIA iRay again, and we can see now we've got a little bit of light in our scene. Everything's dark because we haven't adjusted our settings on our, on our spotlight yet. Uh, and the way that we do that is we come up, we make sure our spotlight is selected up in our scene tab. We come down here until this light tab, which you see down here. Uh, and then we come on to this light section right here. And what you get here are the basic settings for a spotlight. And what we want to do is we want to come down to this one, this luminous flux uh, right down here. A default, it's set at 1500, uh, which gives this brightness, uh, this you know brightness of light that we see in our scene. And what we want to do is we want to increase that. Uh, I always start off just by adding an extra zero in, see how we are. Still a bit dim, uh, maybe double it up. Still dim. Let's double it up even further. Let's go up to 60,000 lumen. And it's probably still a little bit dim. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go all the way up to 100,000. It's still not the brightest, but for now it will serve its purpose while we get this light set up. And if I was just to flip across to our camera, we can see our model right there in scene. Now, when we're using a spotlight in our scene to light our model up like what we are here, uh, we can set it up in a number of different ways to get a number of different effects or different themes or different lighting options uh, that we can light our model up with. In this instance here, we've got, you know, a fairly split face on a, this part of the face is all lit up the other side is in darkness and in shadow. And this is known as a, a split light. Uh, what we can do quite easily though is move the move the spotlight itself and we can create different effects and the best way that we can do that is to come up to our camera selection section at the top give it a click and we can actually choose the spotlight as a camera that we can view through so if we give that a click we can see that we're now looking through the spotlight as though it was a camera and what this allows us to do is to move the cam move the spotlight around uh, to get it into the right position that we want want to get it into. So if I just come out here, just go back to texture mode so everything's a little bit faster, what I can do here, I can scroll my mouse wheel backwards and I can zoom in a little bit. If I go forwards on my mouse wheel, I'll zoom back out. And like any other camera, we can just move our, our spotlight around to position it exactly where we would want to be. Uh, I'll try there for now, see what we get. We come back to our camera, come back to our NVIDIA iRay, and now we get a different lighting setup. Uh, this is, it's close to being something called a Rembrandt lighting, where we get a little triangle on the opposite side of our model's face as to where the light is. Uh, it was designed and developed by Rembrandt, the artist in year whatever it was when he was ever knocking about it's supposed to give it be a, a nice good flattering light uh, and it's just you want to try and get a little triangle on the opposite side of a face over there i haven't quite got it there but you know for the purpose of moving the spotlight that's that's really the main part of what we're doing however we've got a slight other problem here and this is a spotlight is a very harsh light it's very bright in the center area uh, but then the shadows are very very dark as you can see, real dark on that side of a face, on the side of a nose, and this little part of a body down here. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to soften the light up a little bit so it's not so harsh and it's not so uh, casting these really dark shadows. And the best way that we can do that is once again come over to our lighting section and we can come down to this, this drop down here called Light Geometry. Give it a click and you can see that we can turn our light into a number of different shapes. Rectangle, disc, sphere and cylinder. Uh, you'll have to play around with each different one to see what type of uh, effect that each will give. But for this purpose, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it into a rectangle. Now you won't see much of a change yet, but if I come up to my perspective camera and then just spin around so we can see our camera itself you can see we've now got this little rectangle 
in the center of our spotlight and what that's doing it's emitting all those hundred thousand lumens that we've set down here now in this square of if we look down here height and width a 10 by 10 square so the same amount of light is coming out in this this a larger area rather than the point that would be right at the center of the spotlight and so if we want to try and soften the light up what we need to do is come down to the height section let's say uh, put it into 100 and put the width into 100 now what we've got we've got a nice big light in our scene uh, very similar to uh, soft boxes and whatnot that you'll see in a photography studio it's not quite but it's it's similar to a soft box and if we were to come back to our camera now you can see that those shadows that we had previously have now all lightened up a little bit the softened a little bit the light itself isn't so harsh and altogether it's a better way to light our scene rather than that really bright harsh spotlight that we had previously now we do still have some dark shadows in here you're not going to get everything uh, rid of everything with a, with a softening of the light so what we can do we can always add another spotlight into if we need to so again if we come back up to our perspective camera uh move our perspective camera around a little bit let's come over to this side and we'll drop a light in roughly around here the position you know you'll have to play around with yourself we'll drop another light in here another spotlight so we'll come up to this icon this time give it a click again we'll go on apply active viewport transforms give it a click and we'll just drop our light in there and if we come up to here now and just come to spotlight 2 we'll just reposition it ever so slightly just so i can get it roughly where i want it to be we'll just say there for now maybe bring it in a little bit closer uh and then again if we come back around to our camera and then with spotlight 2 highlighted again we're going to turn it into a rectangle at 100 by 100 in size and then we're going to start increasing its brightness again bit by bit we'll add a 10 onto there probably all that we need that's not so bad as it is uh you know you can fiddle around for as much as you want and now we've created two lights in our scene we've got what's known as a key light which was the first one that we put in and we've now got what's known as a fill light which is fiddle fiddling in those dark areas uh that that we didn't uh, that we didn't want we wanted to brighten them up slightly we've still got a semblance of that rembrandt light in there we might have to change that fill around uh fill uh light the position of it a little bit if you want to bring that back but now what we've got we've got this semblance of a lighting setup using just two spotlights to light our scene up in the way that we have we could fiddle around with the lights a little bit further and i might do uh, for the final render on this but for now we're in a pretty good position only one last thing that's a bit of a problem and that is certainly around the head our model is maybe fading into the background a little bit uh, and maybe there's not not as much dynamism dy dynamicism is that the right word dynamicism whatever the word is in there we, we could do with a little bit more life in there also so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to put a third light in there again i'll come across to my perspective view uh we'll move it around just so where we go we want to try and lighten up the back end uh the behind of our model somewhat so she stands out a little bit from the background uh, i'm going to come from about here and again i'm going to create a spotlight active transform as well back on the perspective camera click ok uh, just again just come up to the the light itself and position itself roughly where i'd like it to be might want to change it again i'm going to leave this one though as a spotlight uh, and the reason for that will be apparent when we come around because we do actually want a bright light on this so i'm going to leave it as a spotlight there but again i'm going to come down to the luminous flux i'm going to add another zero on there see now there's a bit of the light shining on the back of her head maybe a little bit more light let's double that up so what we're getting now she's starting to stand out a little bit uh from the background by this light shining on the back of her head we're now starting to get a little bit of highlight on her shoulders as well which adds a little bit extra to the to the image itself so we'll go up to forty-five thousand, maybe really standing out now if again if i come up to the camera gear the, the spotlight again just change the position a bit ever so slightly just so i can uh, get the effect that i'm personally looking for uh when it come down say on the back of a 
Oh, just at the bottom of a hairline, say at the back. That'll more or less do. I can probably fiddle around with it in a bit. Uh, so you're getting the, the light separating her out from the background. You're getting this highlight now on her shoulders. Uh, and what we've done, we've created three separate lights for our scene now. We've got our original light, which if I click on it, we'll call our key light. We have our second light, which is over off to her right hand side and our left. And we'll call that the fill light. And the light that's shining down behind it, we'll call that a rim light. And what we've done there is we've created what's known as a three point lighting system, uh, where we've set up the basic lighting to light up our model with a main light, a light to fill in the shadows, and then a light to separate her from the background. And that is how we use basic spotlights to light up a scene. Uh, Follow them simple little things, those three lights, if you're going to be using spotlights in, in these artificial lighting setups. And you can't go wrong. It's it's as simple as what I've just done there. There's no there's no magic, there's no special magic sauce or anything like that added into it. Just use those three lights to, to each of them, fill in the role that you want them to fill. You can see up here the way that I've named them. And you can set up a quick little scene just like what I've done there. Hopefully you've got something out of this video. If so, give it a like down below as it tells YouTube that I'm a better YouTuber than what I actually am and it boosts the video up in the algorithm. Likewise, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing as I'd really, really appreciate that. And again, that really helps the channel out a lot. And finally, if you have any comments, any questions about this video, about lighting, about Daz in general, then just drop them down below in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.